Bosch. <laughs> Hello, my name is Eric Oak, and I'm part of Teen Arts Council and Fast Forward. My name is Kayla from Teen Council, and I do DJ Collective. And we are hanging out with Latoya Ruby Frazier. <laughs> okay. When did you start creating art? Oh, well, as a youth in the community that I'm from, uh, I was always drawing and painting kind of to escape the reality of what was happening in my community and in the area. What do you think other youth in your community were doing at the time you started, where you were drawing and painting to deal with what was happening? I think some of them were doing the same thing I was. Uh, I was born in Braddock, Pennsylvania in 1982. And around that period, Braddock had already suffered its worst loss, which was our steel industries in the neighboring towns had all closed and collapsed. And so, of course, systemically, you see, you know, even as a child, even though I couldn't articulate it, I, I was very aware that I was living in poverty. When I really started to push the work, which started when I was 16, I remember we were about to graduate from high school and I had a disposable camera and I just took pictures of everybody that was on my bus. You know, I, I, at each at all of our bus stops, I just took a picture. To this day, I, I've only seen those pictures once. I never did anything with them. When did you realize that the pictures you were taking were becoming work? It was when I went into the second level of photography is when I met my real, uh, my first mentor, and her name was Kathy Kowalski. It was her that really lit the fire under me, and when I had started, in the intro class, I wasn't aware of it. But I think in our lifetimes, we have uh, certain mentors and dominant voices that come into our lives. And we have to discern those voices that we hear because often it's an indication of who you are, or what you'll become, or what to do with your life. And Kathy became that strong voice for me and it was an assignment where I was shooting photographs of my mom on Braddock Avenue one day, and I was supposed to show them in class, but I felt ashamed. I didn't want to show them in the classroom because I was the only black person in that class, and I didn't think that my peers, who were white kids from rural America and Pennsylvania, were going to care or would be interested. I didn't, I didn't see the value in putting up that work. And so Kathy eventually became aware that I obviously was hiding something. <laughs> and one day she pulls me aside into her office and she, you know, wanted to know where my negatives were. And so I had these negatives. I mean, they were strong images. And at that point, my mom was already kind of directing shots and where she wanted to be photographed. And so her response, after she looked at the contact sheets, she grabbed three books. Eugene Richards' Cocaine, True Cocaine Blue. You might know that book of photographs. Uh, the second one was Larry Clark's Tulsa. And the third one was uh, a catalog book on Carrie Mae Weems. And when your teacher gives you those three very different uh, books, it's an indication, you know? So that became the, the moment where it all crystallized and I realized that I was gonna be like these people in the book one day. Uh, as you have a lot of your pictures, um, your grandmother and your mom, do you look at as the person you became today from them helping your artwork, but just helping you just grow up to the person you are? Well, I mean, of course, because now I have this purpose and this role that I play um, I'm able to use my camera as a weapon to speak out against the injustice that did happen to my grandmother's generation, my mother's generation, and my generation, which would be all the kids that I grew up with. Uh, and I can only give them, show them, uh, you know, what my mother and grandmother had the courage to do, which was get in front of these cameras, you know, in these unflattering 
uh, images to really show the repercussions of what happened to us with all the social and economic damage that we suffered. So in your own words, how, what would you describe a photographer? Well, w what my work is, what I would classify it as and write a whole new chapter about it, <laughs> is I see my work as conceptual documentary art. I think that this is a very precious time in our society to have photographers documenting it. And because I'm very committed to that cause, the work needs to be gelatin silver print. Your concept should be backed up by the aesthetic. And I think that that's the difference between an amateur and someone who is really invested. And it's, it's better to be committed to something and have a starting point that you can then expand from than to just be all over the place, you know? Like, you need to have precision and hit what you're aiming at. And what I'm communicating and what I'm saying up there with all that work is that I'm updating the FSA social documentary work of the 30s with 20th and 21st century social and economic problems. So, what would you say is your favorite picture or photo, photo that you took well, I think one of the most difficult images that I made um, that I only recently started to show is my grandmother in her coffin, 2009. So it's called Grandma Ruby, Mom, and Me. And um, when the viewer sees that image, it really puts the punctuation mark on the end of the last 11 years of work I've been making. And the work started with my grandmother, and here it is with her in her coffin. And I, you know, that's an that's end of a chapter. It's an end of a life. You know, it's an end of a part of my identity and heritage. And I think it's really hard to document and make an image like that. But when you find yourself compromised in a position with no economic or political power, the only place you can reassert that power and have strength is, for me, through documenting that moment so it's not forgotten, so my grandmother doesn't become a nameless statistic. You know, there was a woman that lived in Braddock on Washington Street, and her name was Ruby Frazier, and these things did happen to her family. So where do you think you're heading now with that chapter being closed? Uh, the, the last thing that I photographed was I went up in a helicopter, and I flew over Braddock and shot these very large color aerial views following the river when it shows you all the industries along the river. So it's expanding in new exciting ways. Do you think your work can change history? I think artists were very important to our society and to the social fabric because we can move in and out of these gray areas that most people can't because of their titles and what they do. Artists can raise issues and ask questions about anything. And so I think that that's important is, you know, being an artist that is also a citizen that sees the shifts that are happening in their time. Images, right? We remember historical moments mm -hmm. because of images, right? When Martin Luther King was shot, you see the people pointing on the porch, right? Mm -hmm. These are powerful, iconic images that burn into our minds that we remember that this is what was happening in the United States. And, you know, I'm preserving these gray areas and invisible realities that won't change history unless I shoot them. And, and once you kind of insert these other images of missing bodies and missing people and missing landscapes, someone's gonna come along and start to write about that period. And they'll have the images there. If I don't archive and tell my own story of what happened to me and my community, no one will, and it'll never exist. And that's the purpose behind these photographs. Well, thank you again for coming here. Uh, we would love to see your work upstairs soon. So yeah. thank you again, and it's nice talking to you. Well, thank you. It's very nice talking to you. <laughs> Thanks for all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.